All right, this is just a short video kind of explaining Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law, I guess the simplest way to think of it is that for a, const a set amount of gas, so let's say we have some set amount of gas. Here's a liquid level inside of a bulb of a pipette that's been cut off and this sits in a water bottle. There's some gas in there and there's a set amount of it. That's the key, I guess, point is there's, let's say, seven red balls there. That's a set amount of gas molecules. For that set amount and at some constant temperature, if the pressure goes up, then the volume goes down. They're inversely related. But again, one of the requirements to, I guess, establish this law or the law was um, pr proposing these is on this is only true if one, we have a constant number of gas molecules that we're manipulating and they're in a fi uh, there's a fixed number. And two, it's a certain temperature. So what if we take this bottle that has a pipette bulb cut, and this is a little weight we'll add just to make it uh, have some chance for submerging if we apply pressure. So we'll apply pressure, and if we do that, you can imagine what's going to happen if we squeeze this bottle, the water level is going to rise. So if I were to draw that bulb over here, Try and draw my bottle. It's a very bad bottle, but uh, we're going to imagine that our bulb then, with that same weight on it, now the water has risen, and those same seven balls of gas, three, four, five, six, seven, are squeezed into a smaller area. They're going at the same speed because we have kept constant pressure. Gases move at certain, sorry, constant temperature. Gases move at a certain speed based on temperature. So these balls over on the left are moving just as fast as these balls on the right. But we have an increased pressure, not only, I guess, applied by the water, but the gases have to meet that if we're going to come to some equilibrium. They meet that pressure that's in, been increased. Maybe we'll make the lines bigger. By being just more dense, these gas molecules now, bing, 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 are in a smaller space. So, they, of course, they're going to hit the walls more times. Not because they're moving faster, but because they have less space to keep that same speed of motion in. It'd be For an example, just simplistically, It'd be like explaining it. it would be if we just had one direction, the balls go up or the balls go down. If we have a certain speed, but they're in a smaller distance or space than over here, the balls go up and the balls go down. Of course, it would take more time to go from top to bottom over here, and it'd take less time. So it'd be hitting the walls more times over here, even though they're going the same speed as the ball is going up and down over here. Again, they bounce all over the place, but if we were to make it very simplistic, just up or down is the only motion they have. So that's how we can understand Boyle's Law. Now we will expand as we move further into laws. We'll expand into what's called the, inert, the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law can pull together all the various smaller laws like Boyle's Law, Charles' Law. Um, they can, it can pull all those together. We'll talk about that later. Bye-bye.